Invade, search out, capture, vanquish, and subdue all Saracens and pagans whatsoever. Reduce their persons to perpetual slavery and convert them to his and their use and profit. Anyone know what I'm reading here? These are the words of Pope Nicholas V in a papal bull or an official edict of the Catholic Church in 1452. This papal bull, followed by many others from 1452 to 1493, collectively became known as what's called the Doctrine of Discovery. The Doctrine of Discovery is this series of papal bulls that is the church in Europe saying to the nations of Europe, wherever you go, whatever lands you find not ruled by Christian rulers, those people are less than human and the land's yours for the taking. It was this Doctrine of Discovery that allowed European nations to colonize Africa and enslave the African people. It was also this doctrine of discovery that let Columbus, who was lost at sea, land on a continent inhabited by millions and claim to have discovered it because there were no people here. The notion of discovery is a racist colonial concept that assumes the dehumanization of people of color. If you don't believe me, I welcome you to put your car keys and your smartphones out in front of you, and I will come by and discover them. <laughs> <laughs> discovery requires the dehumanization of the people who are already there. Otherwise, I would be stealing them. The doctrine of discovery is a systemically racist doctrine. In 1763, King George drew a line down the Appalachian Mountains. And he said to the colonies that they no longer had the right of discovery of all lands west of Appalachia. This upset the colonists. And so they wrote a letter of protest. In their letter, they accused the king of raising the conditions of new appropriations of land. They went on in this letter to write that he has excited the domestic insurrections amongst us and has endeavored to bring on the inhabitants of our frontiers the merciless Indian savages. They signed this letter July 4th, 1776. 30 lines below the statement, all men are created equal, the Declaration of Independence refers to natives as merciless <coughs> Indian savages. The only reason they said all men is because they had a very narrow definition of who was and who was not human. There it is, right here. Merciless Indian savages. The Declaration of Independence the systemically racist document. A few years later, the colonies wrote, colonists wrote down the words, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, to establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this constitution of the United States of America. However, just a few lines later, Article 1, Section 2, they never mention women, they exclude natives, and they count Africans as three-fifths of a person. Clearly, we the people does not mean everybody. We the people means white, land-owning males. Now, maybe you're thinking, but wait, we corrected that. Yeah, and then about 90 years later, we passed the 14th Amendment. The 14th Amendment extended the right of citizenship to any person born under the jurisdiction of the government in this continent. However, that did not give women the right to vote. That didn't come until 1910 with women's suffrage. It did not include natives because we weren't seen as allegiance to the government and we didn't come into the nation until 1924. It did extend the right of citizenship to former slaves. But we often forget that it was the 14th Amendment in 1970 that was part of Roe versus Wade that was now used to conclude that unborn babies are not human and therefore they can be aborted. What this demonstrates is that the heart of our constitution is not a value for life, but a practice of dehumanization and a value for exploitation and profit. 
Therefore, the Constitution of the United States is a systemically racist document that assumes the dominant has the right to decide who is and who is not human. In 1823, two men of European descent were in litigation over a piece of land. One bought the land from the government, the other bought the land from a native tribe. They wanted to know who owned it. In deciding the case, the court had to decide the principle upon which land titles were based. And they decided that the principle was that discovery gave title to the government by whose subject or by whose authority was made against all other European governments, which title might be consummated by possession. The court essentially went on to say that based on the doctrine of discovery, natives only had the right of occupancy to land, while Europeans had the right of discovery to the land, and therefore the true title to it. This created a Supreme Court legal precedent for land titles, the reason you can buy and sell property in the United States, that was referenced by the court as recently as 2005. The United States Supreme Court is a systemically racist court with legal precedent based on the dehumanization of people of color. <laughs>